Hi there, everyone. I've got a very interesting child for you. Four years old child brought by his parents with sudden appearance of dark brown rashes on soul, which was noticed by them on waking up in the morning. So I'm going to give you some time to think about the possible diagnosis. In the meantime, let me introduce myself. My name is GB Koshi and I'm a GP trained in tropical pediatrics and community child health. I have been previously working as a senior consultant medical officer for the National Health Mission and presently helping some of the patients attending the Kerala East Sanjeevani general COVID, post-COVID and pediatric OPDs, along with patients attending my private clinic at home. Before that all, I would like to say special thanks to my dear Professor Dr. Sandosh Kumar sir, who had actually brought up this idea of this presentation and has been really prompting me to make this presentation since a very long time. And I'm so sorry for this late presentation, sir. So hope you might be having some diagnosis in your minds by this time. I think you all guessed it and got it right, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so back to our patient now. So let me take you through the rest of the interaction with the patient. I took a complete history and did a complete examination and there was no positive history except for that they mentioned about some kind of insects in and around the home. And that too only when that was specifically asked to them. I requested them to send any photos if possible and photos taken were sent to me and as a surprise it uh, turned out to be a burrower bug. Okay, so Today we're going to talk about this very interesting condition which you might come across sometimes in your daily pediatric or general OPD. So I'm presenting from my clinic today and I have changed my background to one with lots of insects. <laughs> and we have got a, such a lovely weather outside my clinic. And I'm very excited and it's a great pleasure to be here today to talk to you all about Sydney pigmentation as part of what we call as insect tattoos. So here in this slide, uh, you can see the pigmentation on the right sole of the child. And also on the other side, that's the photo which they have sent me. It's showing the burrow bug. So what I'm going to do uh, today is basically talk to you about burrowing bugs, skin rashes produced by them, related history taking, and close to diagnosis and differential diagnosis, course of the rash, dermoscopic findings, preventive measures, followed by a take home message. Okay, so let me start by introducing, saying a few words on insect tattoos in general. So insect tattoos are insect-induced cutaneous manifestations ranging from localized irritant contact dermatitis to life-threatening anaphylactic reactions. Insects can cause a variety of dermatological problems, usually presenting with inflammatory skin lesions. They're usually considered harmless to humans, though there have been few reports of the development of inflammatory plagues with sting bugs. Similar rashes are also produced by millipeds and blister beetles, which are also known to release chemicals that can cause erythema and hyperpigmentation after contact with the fluids released by these insects. Now about the Sydney bug, there are arthropods that are recognized by the morphological adaptations for digging. They release an odorous substance from special glands that serve as self-defense, causing pigmented macules when in contact with human skin, especially during the rainy season. They've got different names, burrower bug, burrowing bug, peanut burrower bug, and it's an arthropod belonging to the order Hemiptera, Sydney family, Pendatomidae, super family, and they usually burrow underground around clumps of grass in sandy places or beneath ground litter. The distributed worldwide includes more than 750 species in 93 genera. They've got a dark brown or black or white body with spines on the tibia and measures 2 to 20 millimeter globally. Usually they're not routinely accessible and they burrow in soil to feed on plants. Now, why they're called burrowing bugs? Okay, so as I told before, it's mainly from their activity of almost always being found burrowing underground to feed on the roots of plants. And because they spend the majority of their life underground, it is hard to get a good grasp of their daily activities and their life cycles. Coming to the history, usually you'll get a positive history of outdoor activity, the history of few winged low lying insects in and around the house, history of similar rashes over the exposed areas among family members or members from the same area. 
history of rashes getting resolved on their own without any medical intervention. And there'll be no history of any fever or cough or joint pain or trauma before onset of lesions or any history suggestive of any contact with chemicals. Now about the skin rashes and pigmentation. Usually they're well-defined, multiple discrete brown to black pinpoint macules. So they appear as streaks of orange brown pigment with rich enhancement. They're usually common on the dependent or exposed areas and history of visit to some area with insects will be there. They're usually non-blanchable and non-tender asymptomatic cluster of multiple brownish black macules in point a few millimeters in size or area. Now close, uh, close to the diagnosis, it includes abrupt appearance of uh, asymptomatic pigmented macules and also by dermoscopic examination. Uh, usually the exposed areas are more involved and they're common in uh, rainy or monsoon season, as I mentioned before. And the uh, most important presence of the bug in the house or area around. Uh, there'll be lesions uh, affecting other family members or workplace contacts or people from the same area and rubbing the insect can produce similar kind of rash. And as I said, uh, bizarre and streaky configuration of the macules with tapering edges and removal it's quite possible with acetone spam. Now, uh, based on the nature of pigmentation and its property to heal spontaneously, along uh, with the history being involved in outdoor activity, a diagnosis for burrowing bug pigmentation might be considered. Now, uh, this is a slide about the dermoscopic examination. In general, it's a useful, useful bedside tool to differentiate this benign self responding pigmentation from other mimickers. I'll tell about the differential diagnosis in the next slide, hopefully. Uh, usually it shows clusters of oval to bizarre shaped brown and shiny globules and clothes with superficial stuck on appearance. And basically it's kind of a homogeneous uh, brown black pigmentation with low crusting or necrosis. And you can also find frayed parallel furrows and accentuation of pigmentation around the sweat glands. Um, the findings from which differentiate it from the acryl acquired melanocytic navy is basically they also do have a um, similar kind of parallel furrow pattern like this, but also in addition to that, you'll find fibula pattern and parallel ridge pattern, uh, which is separate, which comes with accidental staining with chemicals. So, can also can occur. Now, this is the list of the differential diagnosis. I'm not going into details of each. But usually, dengue petechiae, lentignus, syndromic lentignosis, viral hemorrhagic fever associated with macular skin rashes, pigmented contact dermatitis, purpura, dermatitis neglecta, post inflammatory hyperpigmentation following viral exanthems, pigmented purpuric dermatosis. Now, replication of the skin rashes, as I told you before, if you press the insect firmly between thumb and index finger, uh, you can observe similar kind of red brown pigmented macules because of the pigment released from the bug. And it can be reproduced by uh, rubbing insects on different parts, on the forearm, etc. And the self-induced uh, self skin rashes, they do have a similar appearance and evolution identical to that seen in patients presenting with the condition, providing strong evidence for signature being the cause. Now, course of the rash, initially there'll be darkening of the pigmentation with maturation. And if untouched, these rashes fade over a week without any residual changes. And it doesn't change with soap or water wash. It can be rubbed uh, using acetone liquid. And usually they're asymptomatic with no pain or itching. Now coming to the preventive measures which, which we could take. You might use sprays for getting rid of the bug. It's very important to identify the source. Wearing appropriate light colored and long sleeve clothing might be useful and use of insect repellents, staying indoors during dusk and dawn, paying attention to outbreaks, and the use of insect screens on windows can also be helpful. Now the takeaway message, knowledge and awareness about this newly recognized and uncommon cause of exogenous pigmentation could help in avoiding unnecessary investigations. A proper history supported by clinical examination and findings and diagnostic clues could help in arriving at this simple diagnosis. Make sure there are no underlying serious conditions because sometimes they could be missed. So in, in such a case, you will need to order relevant investigations if it is essential. Adequate counseling about the, about the self-resolving nature of this condition will alleviate fear and anxiety of the patient. 
So uh, these are some of the references which I used for this uh, preparation of this presentation. So hopefully you might come across a similar case in your OPD, uh, which would hopefully make you remember my, make you remember my presentation sometime in future. Uh, this is another slide showing me different pigmentations from different insects, just out of interest. Okay, so thank you so much for listening to me all this time and for your patience. And if you do have any questions to ask, I would suggest please feel free to post it as a comment below once this video gets uploaded. And I'll try my very best to provide possible answers to your questions sometime this week or later. Thank you so much once again. So you take care, enjoy the rest of the day. And that's the end of the session. And this is Jibi signing off, hoping to meet you next time if there's going to be another presentation from me. So bye-bye for now. Thank you.